Hello and welcome to this Bringing Student Life to Light webinar. My name is Jordan and I'm from Make Happen and today I have with me Chloe from Anglia Ruskin University, Demartas from the University of Essex and Kaylee from Rittle University College and they are all current students and student representatives from their universities and I'm going to be asking them questions that have been provided by you guys to get an insight into student life. But before we get stuck into the questions, I want to quickly tell you about Make Happen, who we are and what we do. So we are an organisation that help young people make informed decisions about their future, whether that's going to university or going to college. And we do this by going into schools and colleges in the Essex area and delivering presentations and talks on their future options. So before we jump into the questions, I just want to get the ambassadors to introduce themselves. So Chloe, can we start with you? Hi guys, um, I'm from Anglia Ruskin University and in September I'll be a third year student and I study film and media. Thanks Chloe. Domatas? Hello. I'm Domantas. Uh, I'm a University of Essex student. I'm going to be third year. Study more in history and politics. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks, Domantas. And Kaylee. Oh. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm Kaylee. Um, I studied at Rittle University College. I have now graduated, and I studied equine performance and business management. Thanks, Kaylee. Okay, so let's jump into some of the questions that you guys have provided for today's webinar. Um, so the first question is, did you do any research about your university and your degree before choosing it? So, Domatas, can we start with you? Okay, so uh, I always wanted to study abroad. So that was one of my, my, my first things. So I started looking up like a couple of universities. I didn't really like go research them up like super. I asked around a couple of friends what kind of universities. And there's like also a very similar program in Lithuania because I'm Lithuanian uh, called Kalba. And they also provided like a couple of options. I checked them out. I asked a couple of my friends that were studying abroad. I was like, okay, okay. And they were like, oh, Essex. What is that? You know, like sounds interesting. You know, it's like a good uni. I checked it out and it was like, oh, okay, it's good in politics and history, like has like a very strong department. So I did a bit of research and I just wanted to go there. Perfect. Perfect. Chloe, yourself? Um, I did a bit of research on what course I wanted to study. It wasn't really what uni it was. Um, and I knew that it was going to be either film or media based. And I found a couple that did both of them, so film and media combined, and went and had a look. And Anglia Ruskin was kind of one of those fifth choices that you put down on um, UCAS, and it came through as a unconditional. So then I decided to go and have a look, but beforehand it was kind of just a, a wing it decision. <laughs> and Kaylee, yourself, did you research your course and your university? Um, I did. I studied um, at Rittle previously for my college course um, and then I left to go to work. Uh, I didn't really want to go to university um, and then I decided that I did want to go to university so I knew I again wanted to do something with horses so I really just looked at um, Rittle anyway because I knew it was already um, had the courses that I wanted to um, so I didn't really research that much about the university. I knew I was going there. I was just checking out the course that I wanted to do um, just so I picked one that was quite broad um, that would just allow me to have some more transferable skills once I graduated. Right, great. And Kaylee, can you talk to us a bit more about Rittle? Because I think it's quite a unique university and college. So maybe you can explain to us a bit more what it's like there. Yeah, of course. So we are a, a land-based college. So we offer, um, our courses are based primarily um, on the land-based sector. Um, so we have courses like agriculture, um, we do animal management and science, we've got art and the environment, and we've also got animal courses um, from our canine therapy and equine, um, as well as veterinary physiotherapy and sport. Um, we are a big campus, um, but we're a small community. So we don't have that many students, um, but we have like a big campus, which is kind of what drew me to it in the first place. 
um, because it was going to be that there wasn't that many students that I'd need to get my head around but it was a nice big campus um, and it was out in the country which for a horsey person was kind of what I wanted. <laughs> Thanks uh, and Chloe I think um, something that's unique to you you are commuting to university right? Yeah. And living at home so can you tell us a bit about that experience? Yeah so Angie Ruskin's in Cambridge for me and I'm from Peterborough so it's quite a close uni so I didn't even bother to think about looking at living um, and my commuting experience has been quite simple I mean you get the odd bus which is late and things like that but I mean driving to the park and ride and then getting on the park and ride is quite simple and the parking's free it's quite cheap for a student to get on there and it's a far, not even a five minute walk as from the bus stop to uni. So it's quite an easy thing to do. The only downside with it in my eyes is that you've got to get up at least an hour earlier than what you would if you were a student, like living. Because you might think, oh, I've got a nine o'clock lecture. That's okay, I can get up at quarter to nine. No, with, it, with commuting, you need to get up about half seven just to make sure that you're ready and can get on the bus because the buses sometimes aren't predictable. Um, and what about the social side Chloe? Do you think you have similar opportunities to those who are staying on campus? Yeah I mean I've not missed out at all. Um, I, at the beginning you get the whole stereotype of oh yeah I am going to miss out things aren't going to be the same for me but I mean you can like being a student ambassador the job that we have it has made me have friends from different year groups different courses that you might not have found usually i mean joining a society you might but other than that uh, the only thing that you could maybe miss out on is a sport because sports tend to um train and things like that at eight o'clock at night and you might go well it's a bit late to start commuting and driving and that sort of thing yeah yeah Great, okay, let's talk a bit more about sports and societies and clubs. Domatas, are you part of any societies, clubs or sports teams at Essex? Oh yeah, definitely. So let's start out with societies. So I'm actually welfare officer of the Lithuanian Society, secretary of the International Relations Society, uh, was in the music society for all, a lot of things, and also did a lot in boxing. I used to go to boxing in uni. Because it's very, it's, it's practically cheap and they give everything to you because they just want to train for the people. So it's very good because, okay, e each society has a different purpose to it because it's created by the people. Like, it's students making things for students pretty much. And so let's say like Lithuanian society, it might be like a good entering place to like meet up with other Lithuanians if you feel insecure in the new country or like, you know, you want to just start off a bit safer. Because a lot of people might have that, you know, anxiety to find out new people. So it's a very good playing ground. At the same time, I see it's a perfect place. Like, you know, there's like Japanese, Italian societies, all type, that type of thing. It's a very good place to learn the culture, to meet like people from, from there, you know, just to study. Like come in and like, oh, okay, I want to understand what is this about. International relations and all the political and like, you know let's say degree associated ones or more like serious type of things of like with your degree. So you might like, we used to invite people, give us lectures to explain a bit more, invite people, everything to do with more about, how do I put it, to do with the degree. It's more degree oriented and more job oriented in giving and like applying your degree to, to new things. And the sports ones, they're just probably the, be the really good ones because you just keep it, you know, for a cheap price. You just go, you know, the two trainings for like the whole year, like climbing. There's a climbing swan. If you have the entire climbing early, you pay 20, 20 pounds and you got the whole climbing year for like for 20 pounds the whole year. So it's really, that's a good exercise, I would say. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um... Chloe, let's go to you. What do you enjoy most about your degree subject? Oh, gosh. Um, my degree, I mean, there's a lot involved with the film and media one. You, okay, yeah, you've got to watch films and you've got to watch TV programmes, so it's not a bad thing. 
but there is a lot of theory to it as well. You, if you don't understand the theory side of things, you can't analyse the films. I mean, I can't watch a film or TV programme properly anymore because all I do is analyse it. But with the film and media degrees, you can do as much practical or as little practical as you like. So I've got a video game module next year, which I just have to play video games and write about them. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, as much practical and as little practical as you like, you can tailor them to your specific needs. Right. Yeah, and Kaylee, was your course a mix of practical and theory work too? Yes, definitely. Um, we kind of, in the first year, it was balanced out, I'd say about 50-50%. Um, so we got to do a lot of practicals with the horses um, and the hands-on stuff. Um, and then third year, it kind of made it quite theory-based, I think, because we're getting us prepared for going out in the real world. Um, and depending on what line we wanted to take within the industry, um, I wanted to go business-focused. Um, so therefore, a lot of my um, projects and assignments were business-based, whereas um, and also my dissertation. Whereas um, a couple of the girls in my class, they kind of done theirs on um, like performance of the horse, so then they were practical. So throughout, like similar to Chloe, it was tailored to your needs and your preference in what you wanted to do and what you wanted to get out of your degree. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Dematas, so I think you also mentioned to me previously that you have a part-time or had a part-time job while at university. Um, did you find it difficult to balance the two? Uh, that's a very good question. So technically, I had a couple of jobs. Now I started working again, working in a, in a bar called Hudson. Uh, just now, you know, apocalypse get, end, ending a bit, getting a bit of jobs. So <laughs> what really happened is, is like I started off in uni. You want to warm up, you know, if your parents are like have enough money to sustain you for a while, you want to like warm up a bit and, you know, just grow up. You want to make your own money. You want to buy your own things. You want to live for yourself a bit, you know, not be a leech. Just do your own thing. Don't, don't follow anyone. Like, don't let your parents tell you what you buy. Nah, you buy your own thing. So for that, you need money. So I became a, I used to work in a KFC. Like everyone starts on KFC. And it was, you know, it was good management because there was a lot of students. They usually, students work in these kind of jobs, which is like, don't be afraid to just start off like in a fast food or any like restaurant chain. Because it's usually us. It's usually students starting off in these jobs. And usually the management, it's going to be pretty good. They're going to help you like, you know, give you free days and blah, blah, blah. Later on, I started working as a student ambassador and I used to build stages in London. That was a bit more interesting because I had to do more paperwork, blah, blah, blah. But the job itself was like more interesting because I had to travel to London and, you know, everywhere else. So organization wise, it actually pushed me a lot because I had to like all in and I lost a lot of, how do I put it, weekends. Because going to London to build stages, you know, it, it usually goes on stage, like on, on Saturdays and, you know, you lose those days. So you don't see your friends and blah, blah, blah. you get a bit tired. But if you understand that your primary thing is to study, you know. Maybe you're like, yeah, you know, sometimes money is important, you know, and someone, but that's re rarely the case. Usually you start off and you, you have some sort of money that you will always come in. You're coming in to study. So you can balance it out. It, it really depends on your manager that is inside your job, I would say. So if you, if you get a good job with like proper people, they'll always help you because they understand things because humans are human. Mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not machines that don't feel anything. We still like understand that there's troubles and you know there's more important things than you know to work my day one shift of like 16 hours at kfc no 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 one cares about that <laughs> get a degree <laughs> thanks martas and chloe can you talk to us about the job of being a student ambassador because i think that's probably a role that many people aren't aware of yeah i've done it since the get-go so because i didn't want to miss out on the friendships maybe that i thought i would and i wouldn't uh, change it for anything. I know some unis vary on like pays and things like that. Mine's £9.30 an hour, which I mean is brilliant. And come to open days and things, everyone that's there in a student ambassador top has been hired. Like we don't just turn up, like there is like a process. And I mean, I've done so much as a student ambassador. I've traveled the country. I've been 
up north this last year doing UCAS events. I travelled all the way down to Exeter and did three or four days in Exeter. I've been to Leicester. It's just you, it's not just, it's not just a job. Like I really enjoy what I do because on an open day, the prospective students don't actually care about what the lecturers think. Okay, you've got to like them because you spend three years with them, but it's the students' voices that they want to hear because if you, students are very honest. If you say, I really don't like it, then students probably wouldn't come. But I actually really enjoy my uni. I really enjoy being there. And parents like to listen to you as well because they're sending their kids away and it's a big deal to them. <laughs> so they like to listen to you as well. And if you've got a good point of view for it and you know you're telling the truth, parents feel the same way and so do students. But yeah, student ambassador job is such a good thing. And if you don't want to take a job that they offer you, you don't have to. Whereas in somewhere like KFC and McDonald's, if there's a shift, you take that shift. That is your shift. Whereas I get emails weekly, daily and saying, this is the job. This is the job. You could go to this school today. You could go to that school. And if I'm busy with uni, I can just ignore it and just leave it. And they'll be like, okay, somebody else will want it. So it is very, very easy to work around your course. Like Demata said that, your course is your priority so they actually because they're in that un the university they know that that is your priority yeah yeah thanks chloe definitely um i'm wondering if you guys have any tips for students who are thinking about going to university um so now you have that experience looking back is there something that you wish you knew before joining the university um, can you think of any tips to give those students? It could be related to uh, money management and things like that, or things about the course and accommodation, anything at all. Uh, Kaylee? <laughs> um, I think the first and foremost thing to say is don't hold back and don't stop yourself from getting any, any opportunities. Yes, you're there to get a degree, but university is so much more than that. Um, and I started going in and I'm not, I wasn't very academic. I did the first day I sat there and thought, there's no way I can do this for three years. And um, this is going to be a real struggle. University is hard. I'm not going to kind of make it sound like it's a nice and it's a dream. And you kind of stay there for three years, having a nice time going out drinking. It's not, it's hard work, but it's also the best three years of my life. And without a shadow of a doubt, I'd go back and do it again. Um, and I think just make the most of your opportunities to extracurricular stuff like join societies, do student ambassador work but you can go and you can get experience elsewhere as well like like going to UCAS like joining in open days um, and sharing your experience at university society's trips if you get the chance to be like a course representative you then become the student voice it helps grow your confidence just get everything and anything you can out of that university in your time and yeah that's probably the one thing I would say to anyone that goes to uni from my experience perfect thanks Kaylee some my, Mine's are a cup very simple. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Like if you don't know anything, just no one's gonna punch you in the face if you don't know it. Like go ask. Like it's better if you ask. Because when you get lost into this, you know, oh, 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 oh. sometimes you get lost in the qu what kind of question should I ask? That and then is the hard part. But just try, just try. People will try to help you out in any any purpose that's their job that that they just they want to do that kind of thing because maybe they're just good type of people the other one is don't also get maybe too involved into like other people lives maybe maybe try strive always for yourself because sometimes when you need so many new people you get really attached to them all the time and you're like oh you know these are my new best friend always strive to be still do your own thing because real friends will stay for you like you know they'll they'll connect and just keep on going. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, great. Thanks, Matas. Chloe? Um, I mean, I'm the same as everyone else, but when you get to uni, it is the most daunting thing. You walk through those doors and there is so many people and you just want to turn around and go back where you've come from and go, nah, not today. I'll think about it another day. But honestly, everyone that is in that, university has been through the exact same thing that you're about to go through 
everyone has had to walk through that door everyone has to sit their first lecture sit their first seminar do their first assignment everyone's been there and done it so like Demata said don't hold back don't ask any question yes lecturers will get annoyed with you at some point but i would rather a lecturer get annoyed at me for asking too many questions than not ask any and then be like well are you doing okay like how's uni going for you because you've not actually spoken and the same thing about the student rep i've been a student rep for two years now first year it was only for my individual course but now i'm a student rep for three courses and if if students didn't come to me and say oh this lecturer i she, i just don't like the way she's teaching could you say like oh could she do a bit more practical with talking to us and things like that if nobody came forward to me and said anything my job would be pointless but universities really care about what the students say like you are paying to be there it's not as if we just stroll up one day and it's there like we choose to be there they want to know what we want like if we don't like how it is they change it okay it might not happen overnight but it will change something will get done if you don't say anything nothing will get done yeah yeah definitely thanks i also have one one really practical one yeah one, sure. hour, one hour a day readings just yeah. one hour a day minimum and you'll probably mm -hmm. get like first and everything yeah <laughs> makes a difference that one hour yeah Great, so I've got two more questions. One is for Kaylee about graduation, and the other one is just a highlight um, of your university experience so far. So I'll give you some time to think about that one, and I'll go to Kaylee first to talk about graduation. What is it? What is that experience like? Um, amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's kind of what, once you finish your degree, that, that build up, I think the life for me personally, my last year, my last semester, I kind of lost sight a little bit about what it was. And I, I kind of was a bit like, I'm done now. Um, I just want this over with. Um, and then all I could see was just like, no, it's fine. You've got like a few months left and then you're going to walk down and you're going to get that graduation gown on and you're going to walk across that stage. And that's kind of what got me through. Um, so it, it's an amazing experience to go um to sit there with everyone that you've studied with the last three years and um, everyone's in the same boat you kind of you apply for your gown now time um and then that's all booked up it's all exciting um, and then it's kind of the countdown and again you've left in may um, and everyone's gone home so i had friends from kind of exeter from up north and um, from norway from everywhere so it's a one final time for you all to come back together and get that experience together and um, graduation was just an amazing experience and to just walk across that stage knowing that those three years of hard work I, I am now I now have names after my, letters after my name and it's just it's just, it's just brilliant there's no other way to explain it and I would I went to university just purely for the reason to just get a hand down I've done it if that's what drives you then that's what drives you just I think whatever drives you just make sure you stick it through the whole way yeah yeah definitely Great, thanks Kaylee. So now, just your highlight of your university experience. Uh, Chloe, we'll start with you. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. Um, so going back to the UCAS thing, me and a paramedic student, uh, honestly, it was the UCAS where we went to Exeter, the funniest experience of my life. Um, but we're in the hall with all these other unis, and a school comes in as they do coming up to you wanting to get as many scans as they want because that's what happens when you go to a UCAS fair and one these two girls came up to me and said oh I want to do this course I want to get as far away from home as possible I went okay so be it like here's your course blah 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 and I was like oh so they wanted to come to Cambridge and I went oh that's where I go and we got talking and then they were like, oh, is there a gym? Is there sports? And then it became a joke of, oh, I'll see you in New September and I'll give you a tenner to go to the gym. I honestly did not think they were going to turn up. <laughs> I walked through uni on, I think it was like the first or second week. There's the girls and they're like, okay, can we have our tenors now to go to the gym, please? And I was like, <laughs> um, okay funniest thing because they're from exeter and people from down cornwall 
I know this myself, I'm from Cornwall. When you're in Cornwall, Cornwall's a boundary. You don't go anywhere else. Cornwall is Cornwall, that's it. And Devon is Devon. Like, it's just the, the fact that they come all the way from Cornwall, got to Ch- in, got into Cambridge and went, okay, where's Natena? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you don't think when you do all these fairs, you see so many people, you don't think that anyone's going to remember you, but you actually make such an impact on people's lives just from speaking to somebody for 10 minutes. They remembered you and they remembered the turner. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the money was probably the most yeah. important bit. <laughs> Thank you, Chloe. Uh, Donatas? Okay, so probably uni was like also a very interesting like experience from I say. Probably the most intense ones are the way of the cultures, of the culture, like meeting so many new people and, you know, from all types of the world. So I used to live in the towers of the University of Essex. It's like a student accommodation and used to be like 16 of us and we all like, like in one, in one flat and we had the kitchen that was like very communal and everyone just used to talk about. So imagine everyone's from a different country, but we're all studying like economics, politics, history, everyone's studying something. And we used to just have these talks about like politics and blah, 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 you know, just, just that environment of like, we're, we're like friends, but we're like talking about science and stuff, you know? So it's like, whoa, whoa, very impactful. But still probably one of the biggest ones was, was this. So we were talking with my Spanish friend about the, the Spanish royal family, how it like how it exists, how it very militarized, you know, because he was very into the military. I don't know, doesn't really matter. And my other Italian flatmate goes down, passes us with another with another dude, and I'm like, hmm, what is this? And my Spanish friend jumps out and he's like, bro, what you the, you know what is this? And I'm like, what? It's the Spanish prince that we were just talking about. <laughs> and I was like, what? This makes no sense. This was no mix. So it's kind of surreal. It's a surreal experience. You can, you can meet people from Nigeria, uh, Philippines, London, you know, is also a very big mix of other people. So they come in and then bring another even ununderstandable wife. Like even right now, I'm living from, with a person from the Philippines, from India, you know, everyone's just very different. So if you want like a big culture, like, you know, if you know what your friends are, as I said, and you can make these deep connections, you'll keep them for a long while. Yeah, great. I think that's important. It's hard to replicate such a diverse group of people in any other area of life, I think. Yeah. The range of people you can meet at university is is really, really wide. Thanks. Uh, Kaylee, your highlight? Um, I think I've had time to, oh, well, there's loads of highlights and I can't, I can't think of one that's, that's up the top, but one that stands out for me um, is when I started uni, I was, I was quite shy and I remember my first um, presentation that I was supposed to do and I was supposed to give it in front of 10, 11 people um, and I was shaking and I cried beforehand and I just thought, I can't do this, there's no way I can do this. Um, and so kind of I got over it and I'd done it and it was fine um, and then in my final year I became president of the Equine Society and in my last semester I think it was it was first of May actually um, I had to stand up and give a presentation in front of 100 people and i done it and to me it, that just shows within a kind of a sentence how much university has taught me to grow from being scared in front of 10 people I mean admittedly I was petrified to talk in front of that many people but i done it um, and I was so pleased with myself. And that is one massive highlight that I'll take away from uni. That my confidence has grown massively. Perfect. Thanks. And I think that brings us pretty much to the end of today's webinar. I just want to thank Kaylee, thank Chloe and thank Domitas for joining me today. And hopefully they've given you a real student perspective into what university life is like. And maybe you've picked up some tips and tricks along the way too. Uh, If you want to find out more about university, apprenticeships, what you can do to prepare, then make sure to go to our website, www.makehappen.org. And on our website, there are loads of blogs, loads of video content, and loads of things to engage with and to inform you about university and other options that are available to you. So thanks. Thank you again to the three ambassadors who joined me today. And goodbye.